a biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. This is Andrew McLennan. You might be familiar with the fact that many council-run libraries around the nation appear to have let down defences and allowed books onto shelves that are sometimes described as pornographic. And with coming council elections in the state of Queensland later this week and then again later this year in New South Wales, some parents are taking up the fight with their local libraries. Family values advocate Bernie Gaynor has been highlighting the dangers of many of the books appearing on our local library shelves under the guise of children's reading. Bernie, welcome. G'day, Andrew. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure, Bernie. In a nutshell, can you tell our listeners exactly what is going on in our local run council libraries? Yeah, Andrew, this is a massive problem all across Australia. There are pornographic cartoon books, picture books in libraries all over this country. Uh, And I wouldn't say they are sometimes described as pornographic. Uh, Actually, they have been assessed by the Australian authorities as pornographic, but only after I complained. Uh, and only, only after they've been on shelves for over a decade, uh, these books were deemed to be illegal to even display in public in Queensland. Libraries in Queensland have been lending them to kids. They're in libraries all over the rest of this country as well, and I'm doing something about it. They've got to go. Yeah, and so just to clarify, they're pornographic because they depict sex scenes, but they're cartoons, they're drawn images as opposed to photos of actual events. That's correct. So we're talking about picture books, comic books. Uh, You can think Astro Boy without clothes. That's some of the comics. Uh, You can think Batman without clothes. That's some of the other style of comics as well. Uh, Not just um, sexual activity. They depict very heavy drug use as well, and they're extremely violent too. Um, Some of these books also depict, I hate to say this, children. Uh, People in Australia think that child pornography cartoons would be illegal to hand out to kids in this country. That is not the case. Most councils in this country have books written by child pornography cartoonists from overseas on their shelves. Yep, and again, I want to just clarify that, Bernie. There are cartoons in books on the shelves of our local-run council libraries which depict adults involved or engaging in sexual activity with minors. That's correct. Yeah, and also, like you said, they depict drug use. There are images of people snorting cocaine and doing drugs in in all sorts of uh, shady-looking uh, scenes in these cartoon books, correct? That is correct. Uh, and people, uh, I just want to make it very clear, because some people think, you know, these books are in some adult section of the library. And that is true, there is an adult section of the library, but don't think that is like an 18-plus area that you can go to. It, basically, it is most of the library is the adult section. Um, it is where you have books from... Uh, Jane Austen and Charles Dickens and all those kind of books are in the adult section of the library. These books are as well. Children can borrow any book from the adult section of the library. There is no checks or balances. There's no questions asked. Um, And even worse than that, some of these books are in the children's sections of the libraries as well. Um, The other thing to understand is that some comic books in particular that children would want to borrow... So, for instance, things like the old World War II Commando comics, and my son reads them. These pornographic comic books are right next to those Commando comic books in some of these libraries. If my son was allowed to go into the library unsupervised, he would go and find those Commando comics, and right next to them, you would find, or as it was the case in Logan, you could find comic books that depict bestiality, for instance. I'm not making this up. This is on shelves inside libraries. Yeah, so it's almost like they're just being treated like an innocent cartoon that can't hurt anyone. And yet, obviously, child pornographic images carry heavy sentencing. It's a legal activity, and people who get found with that sort of material are in all sorts of strife. But here we have cartoons depicting those activities, and they're just sitting on our local council library shelves. Yeah, and... Quite rightly, if I was to draw those cartoons and hand them out, or someone else was, uh, I should be investigated by the police, and you would expect such a person to go to jail. That's what Australians expect, but we have our local councils handing this stuff out to kids. It's crazy. It's got to stop. Yeah, but out of interest, I mean, I'm a parent, and my kids, when they were little or younger than they are now, used to go to the local library all the time and buy books. We'd take them there and say, choose a few books, and 
I'm actually really shocked by this. I didn't know about this. How did you find out these cartoons were in these libraries? Uh, it's a great question, and most people aren't aware of this. So I'd heard about some of these books, so I went down to my local library and spent a morning in there, and I was shocked at what I found. Uh, I, some of the books I'd heard about, um, I did find them there, and they are shocking books. What really blew my mind, though, was that there was a whole bunch of other books which were far worse. There had been no media coverage about them. Uh, people be shocked at this. There is a guy in Japan who openly advocates for child pornography cartoons. He draws them. He has been made rich by Australian councils purchasing his books. They are on library shelves all over this country. Uh, so, look, and one thing I'm very happy about is um, I started this campaign last year to have these books removed. Uh, and since that started, uh, especially in Queensland, we've had some success. I've now had four councils in Queensland remove every single book uh, that I have targeted. Uh, well, that's a great win right there. So how did that happen? What was the process, Bernie, for these books to be removed? What did you do? Sure. So first of all, you've got to find out what's in the library. Uh, <clears throat> so there are many, many of these pornographic cartoon books in the libraries. I've picked the four worst authors and decided to concentrate on them. By no means, when I get rid of these four authors from the libraries, will the problem be solved, but it is a good start. I then So I find out what's in the libraries. I then contact the councillors. I contact the mayor. I contact the CEO with a letter explaining who the authors are. Um, I have some censored or redacted images from the books um, so that they can see what's in them. And, and, I, and when you've done that, what's the response been by these councillors and mayors? It varies. So some councils, like Scenic Rim, are very good. The books are gone within 24 hours. Other councils, like Logan, have fought and fought to keep these books on the shelves. And it's taken months to get any action taken. And I don't know why they fight so hard, because they still capitulate in the end. Um, it, it's kind of crazy. Uh, Southern Downs, for instance, in... in uh, I guess, southern re regional Queensland, just last week told me that it probably wasn't going to get rid of the books. It was going to seek advice from a library association. I just rang the local newspaper. Within 24 hours, they were gone. Uh, so I've got a, I've got a uh, strategy. I'm targeting councils. Uh, I'll be moving this campaign into Western Australia, uh, South Australia soon, and then into the other states as well. But I can tell you, <laughs> parents might be shocked by the fact that these books are on the shelves, They'll be even more shocked by this. The Australian Library and Information, Information Association, so the peak body that represents librarians, is actually fighting to keep these books on shelves. They have just put out a manual to librarians across this country, teaching them, training them how to avoid complaints. It even suggests that librarians turn off the phone, shut down social media, and don't answer their emails if it means they don't have to deal with complaints. They are desperate to keep these pornographic books on the shelves. Uh, and it is quite disgusting, really. Uh, and they should hang their heads in shame. Yeah, look, I, I'm just struggling to even understand that. Uh, I, as a parent, I just I, I can't believe it. I'm sure that every parent out there, including people who work in libraries, would not want these books on these shelves, and I can't, you know, jump to conclusions and try and say why these librarians are trying, are fighting so hard to keep these books on their shelves. But thank God for you, Bernie, that you're actually fighting against this and pushing back against it to try and get this rubbish removed from these library shelves. Uh, well, look, I, I'm very happy to be involved in this project. Um, I actually have a fair bit of time on my hands uh, for these type of battles because uh, just the way things have gone uh, with my backgrounds um so I, i'm i'm happy to have this battle but yeah there are forces out there who are trying to keep this stuff on the shelves and put it in the hands of kids uh and you know they are the same it's the same group for instance who are trying to push drag queen story time in libraries uh this they're this is all linked yeah so there's a there's what we call a woke agenda there yeah and again i yeah i wonder if how many of these people are actually parents themselves and have small innocent children that they don't want exposed to this sort of stuff but but let's move forward so you said you're going to target other states do you get help from people in other states bernie or do you just go this alone uh no look so i've been very lucky and fortunate uh for the 10 years i've been involved in these types of battles that people have supported me through my website uh, which is bernardgaynor.com.au. So that, that has kept me going. Um, I talk to people all over this country 
Um, I'm having a meeting tonight online with some people uh, to talk about some plans for the future. There are other people in other states doing some great work. Uh, so I've got volunteers at the moment researching every library in Australia. Oh, that's good. Uh, so, How many libraries are there in Australia out of interest? Uh, well, look, there are probably 500 local governments. Uh, so how many libraries they have. So when I say researching, they're more researching the catalogue of the local government library yep. network. Um, and I will have up on my webpage within the next couple of weeks, I think, a database where people can go to look to see their local governments, uh, whether it has any of the four authors that I'm targeting. Uh, and we're going to be recording our victories in there as well. So we've got four wins, we've got two partial wins, and we've got two wins um, that look like they're going to happen soon here in Queensland. So that's eight councils. Um, it should, I, I should point out that not every council in Queensland, for instance, has these books. So there's 73 in Queensland. Off the top of my head, I think probably half of them didn't have any of the books that I was looking for. Yeah. So that's good news. Which is good, yeah. Yeah. But the bad side is half of them do, and I can tell you that the closer you get to the city centre, the worse the libraries are. Yeah. Well, that's what I would have expected because uh, most country people are full of common sense and uh, and manners, whether they're Christian or not, and especially parents with their own kids or nephews and nieces or grandkids, and they wouldn't want this stuff uh, in the hands of their kids or their grandkids either. But I want to just remind everyone that your website is Bernard Gaynor. That's G A Y N O R dot com dot A U. That's Bernard Gaynor dot com dot A U. You obviously are relying on support, and that's financial support, prayer support, and volunteer support to continue this fight. But it just reminds me of what Jesus said you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. And uh, it is our job to, to bring the salt and bring the light to the world. And I just want to commend you, Bernie, for as a parent, for taking up this fight on behalf of all of us because this is a noble fight and this is something that is definitely worth fighting for. Uh, look, thank you very much for that, Andrew. Uh, any success doesn't come from me. God has looked after me and my family uh, through this battle and my wife actually uh, is the rock that I depend upon. So I, I love my wife, Hell. She's been wonderful. Uh, so yeah, thank you, though. Well, Bernie, I want to thank you so much for your time, and I wish you all the best on this uh, this battle, this ongoing battle, and also please keep us updated how it goes. Absolutely. More than happy to keep you in the loop. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.